Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Becky and I like to read. Today I am finally getting around to filming another six star review that I read this year. I really loved this book. It surprised me how much I loved this book and this series. I went into this series just for shits and giggles, not really expecting much. I was expecting low plot, high smut, and a lot of ridiculousness. But color me surprised when I actually enjoyed this series and book two got six stars from me. And that book is I Married a Naga by Regine Abel. This is the story of Serena, who is a human. She comes from a very well-to-do family, but she doesn't really care about all of the well-behaved, well-dressed politics that are in her family. So she becomes a hunter. And she is on this planet where Sarzo, who is our snake man, lives. And she is there for this sort of hunting competition where hunters from around the universe come together to try and kill off these things called flayers, which are these huge creatures that are just overpopulating this planet. But during this hunting competition, they are told that there is a physical barrier that they are not allowed to cross into the snake people's territory. And if they do, bad things will happen. So Serena is out hunting these creatures and she spots a group of snake people, one of them being Sarzo. He, she doesn't know that's him, but she sees them and she's very intrigued by them. They work well together. They work in a group. They all seem very intelligent and she hasn't ever seen them before. So she's very captured by them. And then something happens that forces her to cross this barrier and she's got to face the consequences of that. But a member of the Prime Mating Agency, which is the series title, comes to her rescue and says there is a way that you can survive. You would just have to enter into a marriage with one of the snake people. And he says, don't worry about it. In six months time, you can get a divorce. It'll be fine. Just hold out for six months. And Serena thinks, okay, I can do that. I can give it six months and then I can be set free and go my own way. Little does she know that Sarzo here is not about to take that. He is like, I have proclaimed my union to you in front of my gods and to you and I do not break my promises. So he sets out to make her life the best life that she could possibly have so that in six months she will be so in love with him she will not want to leave. And thus their romance commences. So I haven't read a ton of alien romances. I did read like ice, excuse you, you need to stay standing so that people can see what book I'm talking about. As I was saying, I have not read a ton of alien romances. I did read Ice Planet Barbarians. I've read a couple other just like random KU find alien romances, but it's not a genre that I am overly familiar with. I am buddy reading this series with my friend Kim, who has a booktube channel. I will leave her down below. I'm always talking about her. She preferred book one, I Married a Lizard Man, and I much preferred this one, book two. If you love slow burn romances, oh boy, is this a slow burn romance. These books are rather short. This one is only about like 230-ish pages, I think. And it takes about a hundred and something pages for the smut to actually occur. So it is a very slow burn romance because Sarzo is trying to woo Serena. And anytime they come close to sort of breaking that physical barrier, something interrupts them. So it's a lot of sexual tension that leads up to some really good smut. And as you can imagine, Sarzo being a snake man, he has some anatomical differences. And they sort of wonder, is it even possible for our species to mate? <laughs> so along the way, they're trying to figure out each other's bodies and they find themselves very attracted to one another. And so that just amps up the sexual tension in this story. The smut is really good. The anatomical differences of Sarzo makes the smut pretty fucking interesting. <laughs> It's pretty good. This is what Sarzo looks like, but if you go to Regine Abel's website, she does have a mature version of this. Did I scroll her website looking at Alien Peen? Yeah. Yeah, I did. Did I send them to my other romance reading friends? Yes. Yes, I did. <laughs> but aside from the smut, which I really enjoyed, Sarzo is one of the swooniest freaking heroes I've ever read in a romance. He is so determined to make Serena happy. He goes out of his way to just do whatever he can to please her because he does not want her to leave him after six months. So he is trying to make her life as easy as possible. 
And if that just isn't every woman's dream, I don't know what is. But Serena is over here like, I need this as a human and I need that as a human. But she's like, but don't go through any trouble because in her mind, she's leaving in six months. So it doesn't make sense for him to go through all this trouble to give her what she needs as a just basic necessities as a human. She's like, I'll just, I'll just figure it out. And he is like, no, you are my wife. I want to please you, so we're going to make whatever you need happen. <laughs> Tell me that's not swoony as hell. This book brought out all the emotions in me. I laughed quite a lot. Um, part of it was just like imagining Snake Man here. It was just imagining him and his aphrodisiac rattler. <laughs> it just made me laugh so hard. But there were other scenes in this book. There's one specifically with a blue fruit that had me cracking up. It also, toward the end, made me shed a tear. There is something in romance novels that I really like and it just it makes my heart clench. And that is when like one of the people in the couple is like, I want you to be happy. And if you being happy means that I can't have what I want or it, that's not me, then I want you to go and find that. And I'm just like, oh my gosh here. I was debating whether to give it just like a five star rating, but considering that it made me laugh, it made me horny, <laughs> it made me shed a tear, it made me swoony, you combine all those freaking emotions that it evoked in me, and this book I think just deserved that six star rating. So if you have not read this series and you like a slow burn romance, I would say book two is your your goal. Book one doesn't really have slow burn romance. Book two, whew, that's a slow burn. If you like the arranged marriage trope, these all have them. That's pretty much the theme throughout the series. If you like some interspecies romance, definitely check it out. If you're looking for something that is really angsty and dark, these aren't for you. Because these are not angsty, these are not dark, these are pretty much sweet swoony characters with good smut that's what you're gonna get me personally i like that i like mature couples who communicate well i'm i like low angst and that's what i got in this and that's what made it so good for me and i will continue to hype it up i will continue to say if you have read ice planet barbarians read this it's so much better and i will continue to say if you haven't read ice planet barbarians just forget it and go straight to this series because it's so much better in my opinion. So that was my six star rave review of I Married a Naga by Regine Abel. Let me know down in the comments if I've done a good enough job of convincing you to read this series. If not, what can I do? <laughs> what can I do to make you read this series? Let me know. So thank you guys so much for watching me rave about this book and until my next video, read something smutty for me.